the Lord a clap offering of praise this morning. We greet you in Jesus' name. Welcome. We also welcome those at home watching us on the live stream. Won't you just wink at your neighbor, welcome each other, and we're just going to worship the Lord together this morning. Amen. I've got my mind made up, and I won't turn back, because I want to see my Jesus someday.
bless you, Father. When we call on you, you hear our cry, Jesus. We worship you, Father. Be lifted up in this place this morning. Be glorified. Be exalted, Jesus. With everything I have within me, every breath I have, Jesus, we worship you, Father.
up this morning as we gather to give you glory, to listen to your word, Father. We thank you, Jesus. There's always a reason to give you praise and to thank you and to be grateful. And we bless you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you, church. You may be seated. Well, thank you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I greet you all in the name of Jesus. And uh, it's so nice to see you all. And uh, we welcome you back after a very long time and very eventful uh, few weeks. Uh, we thank God that you are safe, that you are here along with your family, your home, and all your children. And uh, also, it's good to uh, have you. Uh, those of you who are joining us on live stream, we thank God for you. Uh, we have 50 people here. We are complying with the, the requirements. And uh, we thank God uh, for every single one of you. It's nice to see you all. Say praise the Lord. Praise Amen. Amen. So uh, uh, we thank God for his grace. No doubt it's because of his grace that we have survived. Uh, that we came through very challenging and difficult part of uh, uh, maybe our entire lives. How many of you were th there for the previous riots? Let's see if some of us were alive, yes. And uh, so for us, you know, uh, first time in our lives, but we thank God uh, that uh, they found the sofa, Pablo. They found that Pablo Escobar. They, uh, they got him, and that sofa was returned. Uh, but uh, more than that, uh, you know, in difficult times, we can only trust God. And uh, you should know that that you can't trust uh, a man, any politician, any government, or any organization. We can only trust God in these difficult times. And we thank God that he is with us. Greet you on behalf of mom and dad, Pastor Brian and his wife. Uh, we thank God for his hand upon them and his grace. And uh, church is back to normal. Actually, we were here during the whole time we were here. And, uh, but uh, uh, our meetings will slowly open up. Tomorrow night we have our Bible school. Uh, that's for a few people that will be opening up tomorrow. And I think your tests are due. Uh, those of you online, uh, Iris and others, please uh, bring in your assignments. Okay. And uh, then, uh, so please remember that. Then our Tuesday meeting is also open from this week. Uh, you are welcome to come. And uh, the church office is open as well. Uh, so please remember that. And then also, uh, what else do I have to say? Oh, we have some birthdays. Evelyn, uh, Amanda, Justin, Jemima, Tina, uh, Ria, Supersad, Tashlin, Lakeisha, Yvette, Anita. Anita celebrated her 40th uh, wedding, no, not a birthday. Thank God for her. And uh, we won't sing for all of you, but to congratulations to you. And uh, God bless you. Um, what else do I have to say? Nothing else. Oh, Dad was on TV this week. Uh, he was on TV. Uh, many of the churches got together and they uh, uh, bought a vehicle for the young lady who, whose car uh, broke down or got burnt. And uh, so Dad was on TV. Someone posted and said on the chat, Viva JNG, Viva. Yeah. You know, uh, JNG is the president. I said, just call me Duduzani. You know? <laughs> Just call me Dudu Zani, and uh, you know I'll be happy with that. But I uh, know we thank God for uh, His work in the community. Try to help your community, neighbors. Don't have to do drastic things, neighbors or family or friends. But uh, let it be done in the spirit of love. I think love con conquers all. The Bible says so. I try to do that. Uh, please put your hands together for Dad as he comes up. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I greet you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. There's some people outside. We praise God for them. Bless you. Uh, maybe uh, later on you can uh, come and we'll serve you the sacrament. But good morning, everybody. God bless you. We're happy that you're here, and I greet you in the name of Jesus. For those of you who are watching us by live stream, the Lord bless you as well. So we are under tough circumstances, coming and joining together for worship of the Lord and praise of the Almighty God, but we'll overcome. We can overcome in the name of Jesus. Don't know why all of these things are happening. Mixed messages. Some people are allowed. Some people aren't allowed. All the rest of it. And, uh, it's such a mixture. But we pray God will help President and everyone else. Good morning, Pastor Brian, Noreen. We've seen them in the week. The Lord bless you. We're happy that you are here. There's a service carrying on. And that service is going to be at 930 
and then we have another meeting at 11. If you're watching us by live stream, you can come at 11 o'clock because so many people wanted to come. We said we'll do that. But please watch for us. This week we'll readjust the times. And we want to ask of you very specifically, please, if you are coming, kindly call us. Kindly call us so that we know that you're coming and then we can put you out there and we can just allocate you for which service, whichever service it is. You know why? Because the police, uh, the, uh, the, the, the legislation is as such that not only will they charge me, but you, if you come, you're also going to pay a fine. So we don't want you to pay a fine. As it is, you're having a tough time paying your tithes and offerings. This is going to be a burden on you. So, so uh, please, we don't want you to pay a fine. So I pray the Lord will bless you. Otherwise, they'll arrest you. So please remember that. God bless the president. Hallelujah. God bless Julius Melema. God bless all the looters. God be with them. The matter that we had the other day, the, the, um, the motor car, the funds were raised by Justin Naidu, Pastor Justin Naidu in, in Johannesburg. He got together, got the pastors together, bought the motor vehicle. They brought it to Durban, presented it to Zandil M. Tembu, uh, the 24-year-old who was um, stopped at a makeshift roadblock. They took the keys away from her, took some stuff, threw her to the ground, took her cell phone, and torched the car. Nobody has a right to do that. Even if you see a looter, it is not our business. It's not our business. Let the police deal with them. We'll do our job. Are you with me? So we're not, we don't have the right to kill, maim, destroy anybody's life. And uh, we pray that the Lord will help us. And that's the message we'll portray. But hallelujah, no more looting. We're not going to talk about all that nonsense. Joshua chapter 10. That's a, We had to do business with God and with heaven. Say hallelujah, 50 people. Shout hallelujah. How's it there, Roland? Hallelujah. Praise God. Roland is a good man. So praise God. He was watching the nation the whole time. 10, 8. The Lord said to Joshua, do not fear them. I have delivered them into your hand. Not a man of them shall stand before you. Joshua therefore came upon them suddenly, having marched all night from Gilgal. The Lord routed them before Israel, killed them with a great slaughter at Gibeon, chased them along the road that goes to Beth Horon, and struck them down. The Bible says, and it happened as they fled before Israel and were on the descent of Beth Horon that the Lord cast down large hailstones from heaven on them as far as Azekah. And they died. There were more who died from the hailstones than the children of Israel killed with the sword. That's what God can do. Put hailstones on people. Then Joshua spoke to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And Joshua said in the sight of all Israel, Sun stand still over Gibeon and moon in the valley of Ajalon. So the sun stood still and the moon stopped till the people had revenge upon their enemies. Is this not written in the book of Asher? The sun stood still in the midst of heaven, did not hasten to go down for about a whole day. And there has been no day like that before it or after it, that the Lord heeded the voice of a man, for the Lord fought for Israel. Then Joshua returned and all Israel with him to the camp of Gilgal. I had to read the whole portion to you, and I pray the Lord will bless you this morning. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. Great in battle, Jehovah is your name. Jehovah. Bless the service, bless your word.
Be with us, be with the family of God and every church that is gathered this morning through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Bible tells us Gideon is under attack. And the Gibeonites plead with Joshua and they say, Joshua, come and help us because we are being invaded by five kings. And the scripture tells us that Joshua takes the army of Israel and goes to Gibeon to help them fight against the Amorites that have combined to attack them. And Joshua has a covenant with them, and you know the terms of the covenant, and he goes to Gilgal. Now, this part of the study and the story uh, stumbles many people. Many people don't understand this, and people will reject this as untrue. People will tell you, what's wrong with you? How can the sun stand still, and how can the moon stand still? They'll tell you in any event, the sun doesn't move, neither does the moon move. They'll tell you that the earth rotates on its axis, and that's why the sun remains stagnant. But nobody questions the weatherman when he says, sunrise will be at 6 a.m. They don't question the weatherman when he says, sunset. I see, only with the scriptures they'll tell you, you're saying. So Joshua had something in mind when he said he was actually. So there's no problem with this at all. Are you with me? Listen, my beloved. Uh, we understand what God means in the scriptures when he says the sun had to stand still and the moon. It actually meant that the earth's rotation was slowed down or it stopped completely. That's what, what, what it was like. But the world has a lot of stuff. You know, they talk about Superman. They talk about Spider-Man. They talk about Batman. They talk about the Iron Man. They talk about Aquaman. They talk about Captain Marvel, Captain America. They talk about, uh, 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 they talk about all of these other people, Wolverine and every one of them. You know, they have a lot of people. Then they have evil people, and they, and they have people like the Joker. They have people like Catwoman, Venom, and Thanos, and others. All of these evil people. Now, what happens is, people believe... Superman. People believe that this fellow that Marvel and DC Comics created, Superman, he can fly through the air. They believe also Spider-Man can walk up the walls. They believe Catwoman and all the others. And you know what? America spends $30 billion a year on just this stuff. People will wait for the next movie. They'll buy the memorabilia. They'll do all of these things, billions. You know what they spend on Halloween? 8.8 .8 billion US dollars a year. All of these things because comic producers, Marvel, DC, and the others, uh, or whatever their names are, the, the comic producers, they, uh, they, they, uh, they will make these, or make these characters and creators and people believe that the Superman can fly through the air, the Spider-Man can climb up the wall, and they'll spend their money for that, but they can't believe an eternal God. Are you with me? So when God says something, they doubt it. How much more should they be believing in a God who gives them the heavens and the earth, makes the sun to shine? And sometimes we are like that. We'd rather believe the neighbor than believe God. We'd rather believe the gossip than believe God. We'd rather believe the SMS and, and, and WhatsApp than believe God. Time has come for us to readjust. Rather believe the eternal God. Say hallelujah. Fictional characters picking up trucks, jumping into volcanoes, walking in the paths of hurricanes, all lies. Only God can do that. Say hallelujah. I believe what the Bible says about Joshua, the sun and the moon. And I hope you believe that. Somebody in your house say hallelujah to the Lord. Do you think the sun can really stand still or the earth's rotation can be stopped? Do you believe that God can pause it for a day or for a night? I'll tell you what, what can God do that? If God created the heavens and the earth, God put the stars in the place, God put the planets there, and God gave man the breath, then brothers and sisters, God can stop the sun, God can stop the moon. I believe that, and I'll believe that till the day I die because God says it that is true say hallelujah come on if you have a hard time believing all of that that means your God is too small you don't have a God that's big enough he's so big we can't imagine what he's like He's so glorious, we can't imagine the glory. He's so majestic in all of our lifetimes. Our minds will never be able to comprehend the length, the length, the breadth, the height, and the beauty of the almighty God. You know what they tell us? 
for the skeptics, for those people who don't believe all of these things. Listen, if any man makes a clock, and this is uh, Dr. R.G. Lee said this. He said, if many, any man makes the clock, you know, he makes a clock and the clock ticks. Certainly that man has enough knowledge to stop that clock as well. So if God did something, God can stop it. Are you with me? And God can stop it any day. And I'm praying he'll stop this coronavirus in a few days' time. Hallelujah. How many have been vaccinated? Hallelujah. Now we're not afraid of you anymore. Previously, they used to say to you, you can come to my house. My dog has the rabies injection. Now they'll tell you, you can come to my house. My wife has been vaccinated. Hallelujah. Isn't that nice? We are safe to come into our houses now. Listen, they have the North American tribes. They have record in their old historical manuscripts that one day there was a sun that stood still. In the old records that they have. We can't go through all of that. The Mayans of Guatemala. They also have an account. during uh, At one time in their history. That something happened. And there was a longer day than normal. The Greek historian Herodotus went to Egypt. And found manuscripts there. And he says that those manuscripts reveal. That there was a day which lasted twice as long as the others. So there's historical evidence as well. There's biblical evidence as well. And I'm saying to you, my beloved, the sun stood still and the moon stood in its place. Whether the earth stopped on its axis or whatever happened, not my business. I don't care. I'm just believing what God says. And I believe that God will help us in the name of Jesus. Let God be true. Let every man be a liar. The word of the Lord will remain forever heaven and earth will pass away what do you say pastor Brian? we've been here before we are here today we conquered the covid we'll be here tomorrow not by might or by power by the spirit of god and only by the grace of god we are here and we'll be here tomorrow this day on this day of battle Joshua prayed an outrageous prayer. That's what I'm coming to. Listen, I told you how Elijah prayed on Mount Carmel. He said, the God that answers by fire. And then the following week, I told you how Rizpah came over and Rizpah was on the rock. She made great intercession. Then we were interrupted by the riots and we had to talk about that. We're going back this morning. There's a prayer and the Bible says, Joshua looks up to the heavens and the Bible says, uh, in the sight of all all Israel, Joshua said, sun stands still over Gibeon and moon in the valley of Ajalon. So the sun stood still and the moon stopped till the people had revenge upon their enemies. Joshua uh, prayed an outrageous prayer. My beloved, this is a season when we must pray outrageous prayers. Come on. We're going to be praying outrageous prayers. We're going to be praying outrageous prayers. You know, we are thinking about, I was thinking about the Tuesday night. And I said, we won't ask anybody to speak. We'll just come by. Let's open up our hearts to God. Let's pray. Because nothing can change it except the almighty God. Listen, my beloved. You've got to pray outrageous prayers. Come on. Outrageous prayers. Prayers that other people don't pray. What other people are not praying about, we'll pray. Prayers that shock people who listen to you. Prayers that will shock you. Prayers that will make people sit up and listen. Prayers that may sound ridiculous, but we're going to pray them because they are outrageous prayers. Listen, I condemned those religious prayers. I condemned the textbook prayers. I condemned also those prayers that people pray just for television. I condemned the prayers that people pray for radio and for listenership. We're not praying for radio. We're not praying for TV. We are praying because there's a God that answers prayers. And if we pray in tongues or prophesy and preach, it's okay. If people don't understand us or even ridic ridicule us, we are praying because we're not praying to man we're praying to the almighty God shout hallelujah when you get to your home pray the outrageous prayers think about the things you've never prayed before you know why we have record Joshua praying out outrageous prayers Rizpa praying outrageous prayers and then we had Elijah on Mount Carmel and today I'm saying to you outrageous prayers my beloved Joshua prayed the outrageous prayer because he had a battle on hand Joshua had to fight. He says, I've got this battle on hand. He had a covenant with the Gideonites. And in verse number six, the Gideonites said, 
Don't abandon us now. They pleaded, come at once, save us, help us. For all the Amorite kings who live in the hill country have joined forces to attack us. The Bible says, Adonai Zedek, Hoham of, uh, of, of uh, Hebron, Piram of Jamuth, Japhia of Lachish, and Deb Debir of Eglon. Five kings. Listen, my beloved. Joshua had to go. In the time of battle, he had to pray outrageous prayers. And I'm saying to you this morning, listen, outrageous prayers because you have a battle on hand. And Joshua looked at the Gibeonites and he had a battle on hand. The king of Jerusalem was there. Adonai, uh, Adonai, Adonai Zedek, he was there. And the Bible says uh, uh, the other five kings, the other four kings were with him. Hoham and we had Piram and we had Japhia and Debir, all of them, five kings. When you got a battle on hand, you have to pray outrageous prayers. I'm telling you, listen to me. You saw the looting the other day. You saw the people running wild in any direction anyhow that's how the enemy comes in you know what i was saying to the brothers the other day can you imagine one man a little smaller than me half my size maybe carrying a refrigerator on his head under normal circumstances you can't do that that must be demonic power are you hearing me? And I'm telling you, we had a battle the other day, but we have battles. Isaiah says, the enemy will come in like a flood. I'll tell you what, you need to pray outrageous prayers because we've got a battle. That's why the Psalm 91 says, a thousand will fall at thy side, ten thousand at thy right hand. You know what God's saying? We got a battle on hand. So when you have a battle, you have to pray outrageous prayers. Listen to me. The Bible says when you read in the, uh, the book of Judges about Gideon, Gideon says great armies coming in numerous numbers. He says they're coming in as locusts. He says they're coming in with camels without number. They'll destroy. But my beloved... When the enemy comes, the enemy doesn't come just quietly. The enemy will come. He'll roar like a lion. The enemy will come like a flood. The enemy will come with all his powers. And you can't sit down and twiddle your thumbs. When the battle is on, you have to pray outrageous prayers. The battle is on. We have to pray outrageous prayers. You have to pray for your husbands. You have to pray for your wives. You have to pray for your sons. You have have to pray for your daughters you have to pray for your businesses we have to pray for south africa we have to pray for the threat that's coming on india is not going to help us america is not going to help us we are going to help ourselves because in the day of battle the people must look up to the almighty god and we're going to pray god you're going to help us to overcome the enemy listen the first thing that god did was god answered by hailstones I'll tell you what here's the miracle here's the miracle of the almighty God the enemy is coming against them and the Bible says they're very close by but the hailstones fall on the enemy and don't touch the people of God I love that that's why your business was standing even though you were looted but God is still going to come through for you you know why God will help his people rebuild God God will protect his people when the enemy comes in like a flood the spirit of God will raise up a standard against him and is advancing you can pray outrageous prayers in the time of battle we can stand up I like it I think we must go back to the old-fashioned idea of praying when the ladies and the men got together remember they prayed all night and said devil we resist you they said we bind you in the name of Jesus they said whatever's bound on earth is bound in heaven whatever's loosed on earth is loosed in heaven they were praying like that they said we tramp you under our feet they said we rebuke your works it's time for us to pray outrageous prayers old fashioned old time prayer you know why that's what brought us so far that's what's going to keep us in the day of battle we know how to pray shout hallelujah in your house hallelujah praise the name of the lord Everybody was panicking. Everybody panicking. Whether you lived in the Zinga Ridge, whether you lived in La Lucia, some of them are here this morning, or Ramslanga, or anywhere else, you were panicking. But in their day of battle, we pray outrageous prayers. How's it with the people out there? 
Hey, praise the Lord. I can hear them. That's a whisper. But we love you in the name of Jesus. Now, let me just go through this. Outrageous prayers are conceived long before the battle. What I'm saying is this. Conception is like a womb, like a sperm, like birthing. You see, my beloved, I'm saying this to you and you must hear this properly today. Some people only begin praying when they encounter the trouble. My God, that's a bad time. That's a bad time. You may not even have. They come running to the house of God. They'll call you, Pastor, can you come by Friday and pray? They'll say, they'll pay people. They're paying for prophecy today. The other day I told the fellow, God bless you. He gave me 300 rands. Just that. People are praying to prophesy over them. Listen, people will only start praying in the winter. I'm saying to you this morning, outrageous battle. If you're praying with, uh, in the outrageous battle, prayers are conceived long before the battle. All sorts of... Joshua was carrying prayer inside his womb. You see what happened to Joshua is when Moses was there and the Bible says that Moses went before Pharaoh, Joshua was there. Something was happening inside of him. The night the firstborn died, Joshua was there. The day they crossed the river, uh, the, the, the Red Sea, Joshua was there. Joshua was watching. Joshua was there. When the Amalekites came uh, to, to attack them, the Bible tells us that Joshua was there. He was holding up Moses' hands. Remember that? And the Bible tells us that they came later. When they got to the Red Sea, they went by Elam and everything else. Had the water and they got the whatever else they did. They got manna and they, then they got the water from the rock. Joshua was there all the time. You know what God was doing? God was putting something inside Joshua's womb. You know what God was doing? Preparing him for the day when he's going to have the five kings against him. And when Joshua had the five kings against him, all Joshua had to do was look up to God and say sun stand still moon in Gibeah but his training came right there in Egypt his training came when he was on the Red Sea his training came when they got water from the rock his training came when they watched the manna coming down I'll tell you what God took you through the training you saw your children sick you were praying you saw no food in your house you were praying your husband didn't have a job you were praying sometimes your life was down you were praying. God was preparing you for a day of battle and there comes a time you pray an outrageous prayer. You stand up and you'll be like Joshua. You say sun stand still. Moon at Gibeah. You know why? Because you moon at Ajalon because you have something in your spirit that was born there. People of resurrection life upper room you were born with prayer. You were birthed with prayer. Pastor Brian has been praying for 40 years teaching the people we have been doing that and now is a time of battle we got this inside us and we can pray i like it you weren't afraid you're praying you know why because you had this outrageous prayers outrageous battle prayers are conceived long before that battle two outrageous battle prayers address the heavens these are not ordinary prayers these are not common prayers. These are not superficial prayers. Mundane prayers. Outrageous prayers deal with heaven. Are you hearing me? Sun and moon. Sun on one hand. Moon on the other hand. Psalm 141, number two. Let my prayer be set before you as incense. The lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. The, and then Revelation 8, 4. The smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints ascended before God from the angel's hands. Both of these verses tell us that when your prayers go up, they go up to heaven. They go up to heaven. Scriptures speak of the aroma of your prayer. My beloved, your prayer is not to man. Your prayer is not to people. Your prayer is before God. You know, some people used to say, we are lost in prayer. We don't get that anymore. Babsi knows about that. We are lost in prayer. Do the people speak like that? You know what they'll ask you? The intellectuals will say, what are you losing yourself in prayer? They don't understand the spirit. There was a time you locked yourself in your closet. 
And you looked at your watch when you came up. My God, it's lunchtime already. And I've been there four hours. That's the kind of praying we need. Remember also, my beloved, you are praying and you didn't know what you were praying. You know why? You were dealing with heaven. You're not dealing with man. The Bible says the prayer comes like an aroma. It pierces the heavens. The prayer comes like an aroma. It pierces the atmosphere. The prayer comes overcoming principalities, overcoming powers, overcoming ruling spirits. If people judge you for your outrageous prayer, people will ask you, why are you praying like that? Tell them my prayers are not for you. My prayers are for heaven. Why are you speaking like that? Why are you praying like that? Some people will laugh at your prayers. They'll tell you, why are you praying for an impossible thing? You pray an outrageous prayer. Listen to the word of the Lord. Pray an outrageous prayer. You know when Nehemiah came back, after he was sent by the king to rebuild the walls in Jerusalem, the Bible says at night, evening, Nehemiah went out. And Nehemiah looked at the rubbish and everything there. were. You know, Nehemiah went alone. If he took the others with him, they would have said, Nehemiah, this thing will never be rebuilt. I'll tell you what, your prayers are not for people. Your prayers are for the almighty God. You're dealing with heaven. <laughs> I think when you get down on your knees, you're going to say, Lord, I'm coming to you now. Heaven, I'm addressing you. Talk to the angels of the almighty God. Talk to the Father. Talk to the Son. Talk to the Holy Spirit. You know that Babsy's shop was trashed. I know other people lost stuff. I told her when she came in this morning, I said, Babsy, don't worry. God, she said, the place wasn't even insured. I'm telling you, we said, God will help you. God is going to help you. God will rebuild. You know why? We're not asking man. We're dealing with heaven today. And God will bless us. Let me tell you, there's going to be a lot of people whom the insurance companies are not going to worry about. Even they won't get the government grants. I'll tell you what, the politicians will put that in their own pockets. They'll get upset with us. God bless you if you're upset. God bless you if you're not upset. But they'll take it. But those small people, they have a God they can call up on and the Lord will rebuild because they dealing with heaven this morning and God will honor them. Incidentally we have, uh, let me just stop to give you an ad, we have uh, uh, COVID testing done here every day, Monday through to Saturday Saturday half day so every day you can come, you can get your COVID testing here, anybody out there that was an ad break, an ad break for a second. Alright, number three Outrageous prayers in battle prove to the enemy who your God is. When you're praying outrageous prayers, the enemy knows who your God is. Who your God is. What your God is. <laughs> uh, you know, I went innocently to go and, to go and uh, help them with the, the, the car distribution and all that. So they gave me a little, uh, they said they gave me five minutes, I did the speech and then whatever else. I had nothing to do with buying the car or anything like that. That's the truth of the matter. Everybody else did that, and they just asked me to do this. I did what I needed to. But somebody posted, they said, Pastor Joey Governor, you took the church money, you bought the car for the <laughs> Why didn't you do a human settlement somewhere? So Andrea calls me, and she says, Dad, uh, Pa, I'll, I'll respond to this now, now, now. I said, don't respond. I said, don't respond, leave them. Uh, Every person has an inalienable right to make a fool of himself. So that's okay. So don't worry about that person. Leave that person. That's that person's business. There. Now, now I'm saying to you, listen, God is going to deal with your enemies because you do outrageous prayers. You see, the sun and the moon were principal deities of the Canaanites. The Canaanites worshipped the moon. They worshipped the sun. And here is Joshua. Joshua is disturbing their gods. Joshua doesn't belong to them. But Joshua is talking to the sun. And Joshua is talking to the moon. Those Canaanites must have wondered what happened. But what Joshua was doing was, Joshua was saying to them in this battle, I'm going to prove to the enemy who this God really is. Sometimes people think about us as being weak. 
Here are five kings together. The mighty power of God shook them at their foundations. I'll tell you what, the enemy thought that they had, that they were victorious and they were powerful, but Joshua had the power of God over his life. Let me say this to you, your outrageous prayer is going to show the enemy who your God is. The enemy is going to see, this is my God. This is who my father is. This is who the Lord is. This is my God. I'll tell you today, my beloved, listen to me. The church, it's time that God must show the enemy who he's like. The church has its enemies. There are enemy agents on the earth enforcing demonic agendas. There's enemy work at your education systems in the schools and universities attacks against our institutes attack against the family of god attack on our morals the enemy is there listen we want to, god to prove to the enemy who he really is it's not your job to prove that to the enemy it's not my job it's god's job we don't have to march we don't have to shout we don't have to go and pick it anywhere. We don't have to make a noise. We don't have to take pe petitions. We don't have to threaten the government. We don't have to go and join the people who are trying to, uh, to do evil or attack the law enforcement. I'll tell you what, God himself will prove himself to the enemy. God himself. Because Herod is the enemy. One day Herod is standing up in Acts chapter 12 and Herod is giving a great speech. The Bible says God hit him down. And the scripture tells us that Herod was eaten by worms. One angel in Hezekiah's day kills 185,000 Assyrians. In Jehoshaphat's day, the enemy will kill themselves. They'll fall into slime pits like in Abraham's day. Beloved, don't worry. When God is on the throne, God will judge. Keep on stealing, brothers. God is on the throne. Keep on hurting the church. God is on the throne. Keep on molesting good people. God is on the throne. Take away from our people. God is on the throne. He's the judge and God can deal with the enemy. When we pray outrageous prayers, He'll deal with the enemy. Don't worry. Even your neighbors, be nice to them. Show them the love of God and the kindness of God because God will deal. So outrageous prayers. What are outrageous prayers? Outrageous prayers are the prayers that, uh, that, that cause heaven to shift. Listen, outrageous prayers, are, uh, outrageous battle prayers are conceived long before the battle. Two, outrageous battle prayers address the heavens. Number three, outrageous prayers in battle prove to the enemy who your God is. And number four, outrageous prayers in battle gives you added time to finish what you started. Joshua said, sun stand still, moon in Gibeah. He said, listen, uh, sun, in, uh, sun stand still and moon in Agilon. That's what he said. Uh, he said, stand still over Gibeon, sun stand still over Gibeon, moon in the valley of Agilon. Sun stood still and the moon stopped till the people had revenge upon the enemy. Till the people. God said, I'm going to do this. Watch this, my beloved. Joshua, he traveled all night. He, he rode. They rode 40 miles through the night. And the morning, they were in the battle. So Joshua and his people had no sleep. And the Bible tells us the day is going on. They're fighting this battle. And then he says, God, I must finish this battle. Let the sun stand there. Let the moon stand there. I want to finish this thing. What Joshua was saying is, God, I must finish off the enemy. Listen to me. Before you close your eyes, you will see God deal with your enemy. Every one of your foes, God will deal with them. Those people that hurt you, those people that took away from you, those people that lied against you, God will give you time to see their end. Ask me, I'll tell you that. God will do that for you. Listen also, God will give you time, enough time to complete your assignment. I want to declare over you today that if you're saying to God, I want to see my children marry, God is going to do that. I want to see my children graduate, my children graduate, my grandchildren from college, university. God must do that. I want to see my daughter driving a nice car. God will do that. 
I want to see my son in business. God will do that. He'll keep you there. You're praying outrageous prayers. God, until this is done, I want to see this thing. Miriam brought Brother Tony. He's here this morning. She brought him out from hospital with Sister Mumsy about a month and a half ago. She brought him home. They brought him from the Amslanga or whatever hospital. She came home. She told me, she said, yeah, past Brother Tony will not survive tonight. She told me that. I think a prophet also told him. Told him this, these days have come to an end. I went to see him. Brother Tony couldn't walk. He couldn't speak well. He's here this morning. He didn't even tell us he's coming. He didn't give us his name, but that's, he has the right to do that. But anyway, <laughs> he couldn't walk. His wife was holding him. They gave him a walker. He couldn't speak well. I'm talking to him. How are you feeling? He said, my God will help me. How are you feeling? Brother? My God will help me. Anybody said anything. The only thing he said, my God. And I'll tell you what, he's driving. Took his wife for the vaccination. Doing the shopping, doing the marketing. Next thing he says, I'm going back to the gym. Who did that? God did that. God did that. God will do that for you. You know why? When you say, son, stand still and give me a move. Give me time, God. God will give that. I declare that over you. God will give you the time in the name of Jesus. God gave him more time. Time to finish off what he's seen. And we're going to pray, God, help us. That we will see these things happening. But somebody asked me last night. They said, you know, what about who's the cursed nation in the Bible? I said, they said, you know, it's a so and so in the Bible. God cursed him or God said there's a curse. And I, they asked me, do you know about that? I said, I don't know. I wasn't there. <laughs> I told him. <laughs> that was my answer. But I said, listen. Uh, Psalm 109 and 17 says, we don't curse anybody. We're not, our job is not to curse anybody. We even bless the bad people. But our job is not to curse. Our job is not to say whom God is going to bless, whom God is. That is God's business. Only thing we do is we enjoy our lives. And you know what he said? I'm going to keep that sun up there. I'm going to keep the moon its place, in its place until it's finished. I'm going to see it done. going to see it done. With my own eyes, I will see it done. And God will bless you. And the Bible says, he wiped out those uh, five nations, yeah, uh, that, 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 that alliance of five nations. And then the glory of the Lord came upon them, and Joshua returned home. We'll continue with that next time, but I believe the Holy Spirit will help you tonight, this morning. And we're going to have the sacrament. I don't think it'll be a problem if they want to come in for that sacrament, the rest of them that are there. Come, uh, beloved. Pray the Lord will bless us this morning. There's a service at 9.30 this morning and a service at 11 o'clock if you want to come in. We're going to serve you the sacrament. Come, let's stand together as we give praise and thanks to God and worship the Lord. Come in. We can bring those folk in. We can come and we can uh, just do what the Lord... I'm so sorry that these... Uh, circumstances are such that we can do nothing this morning but Jehovah is our God. He's faithful. Our God is faithful. We don't have much time but we'll finish what we're doing this morning. He's faithful My God is faithful Everything Everything Oh, 
smile every morning. pray for you in your homes. We're going to pray for you who are here. We're so glad you came this morning. Pastor Brian is going to ask a blessing of, a, of God over you. I've just been trying to encourage you in the midst of all the gloom that Jesus is still Lord. Come and receive a blessing today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is no other name but the name of Jesus. We thank you. We bless you and we praise you. We glorify and we magnify your name. We stand here and confess there is no God like thee. There will never be another God like thee. You are our hope. You're our sustenance. We cast our eyes upon thee from whence cometh our help. We say our help cometh from the Lord. We love you, Lord. We bless and praise you. Every time you speak to us, you open our eyes. You open our mind. You quicken our spirit every time you speak to us. You want us to understand. You want us to see. Oh, we thank you for that, God. We thank you for who you are and for what you are. We thank you for all that you're going to do. We just bless you today. Who else can we call upon? There is no other name but the name of Jesus. So we raise our hearts to you. We raise our voices to you. We ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, Remove all the darkness that is moving in, in our life. Remove all the darkness, Father. My Lord, let us see that light. Let us experience that light in our life. Just bless us and keep us, Father. Let no harm, no danger come to us. Even in and through all that we've been going through, we will say we know where our help comes from. Our help comes from the Lord. Bless your children today. Have your hand upon your children today. Let no harm, no danger come to your people today. We are, a, we are the people that are called by your name. And we know our help cometh from the Lord. Just bless them, Father. My God, just a special end. Not only for the people that are here, but for those that are, could not come this morning. Just have your hand upon them. You are their God and you'll always be their God. Just bless them, Father. Oh, how wonderful it is for us to know that you few be for us, who can come against us? Just for us to understand that truth. If anybody will make a way, we know that you will make a way. You created us for a purpose. You have a plan for us. We want to fulfill your plan, God. Help us to fulfill your plan. Bless your children, Father. We very humbly bow before you. And we say, just bless us. Have your hand upon us. Let no harm, no danger come to us. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You may take your seats. You're going to receive the sacrament this morning. The Bible says, Paul writes to the church. So the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. He broke it and gave thanks. He said, take it. This is my body which is broken for you. After the same manner, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you show the Lord's death till he come. Then he also says, Let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. I believe that God will bless us today. Sickness, disease, death, accidents, evil. And all be thwarted off because of the power of of the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And as you partake today, may the peace of God be upon you and your household. In Jesus' name, bless this emblems.
bless our time together. Through Christ our Lord. Above all power, above all thrones, above all wonders the world has ever known, above all trials and treasures of the earth, there's a way. Rejected and alone, like a rose, trampled on the ground, you took the form and thought of me. that the love of our Father be upon you. The mercy and the peace of God be yours. Bless every home, every family, every household represented here, every business and vocation represented here. Now we pray, dear Father, your peace be upon us even as we bring in a tithe and offering. We ask also, Father, that your blessings remain with us. Now with the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, love of God our Father, fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Rest and abide with each one of us and those we love and hold dear this day and until Jesus returns in the clouds of heaven. Amen. You're welcome to bring your tithes, your offerings, etc. There's a card machine there. Please uh, watch for the times uh, in your bulletin. We'll send you notifications about the church times, etc., etc. after we've determined what we're going to do. So the Lord bless you. God be with you. And uh, peace be upon you and your family.